um, for a for a focus area we can use and um, flesh out a little more is the project um, diversity and inclusion uh, focus area uh, project and community I think is what we used for badging but um, there's a lot of um, kind of missing parts there that I think would be helpful in, in working on this um, new program that we get some more information on um, what those mean. That's all I have on that. Um, we, we, we basically built a lot of um, information around it, but we had kind of minimal information to work off of, but we did our best. Are you talking about these documentation issue tracker communication yes. channels response time quality yeah. and sentiment? Yep. Okay. I think that's as good a place to start as anywhere. And if this is something that works well with what you're working on anyway, then we can have some synergies. I like synergy. So I also put the, the tracking spreadsheet. So just for those of you that don't know, we use this spreadsheet as a way to one track progress with respect to their releases. Um, but then also just kind of capture what other people have brought up in the past. So like what's on Georg's screen right now, for example, those on, under the considering in that first column under considering are, are just that we've talked about them. And actually I think Georg, we can mark the readies as released. There should be a yes. Sala built this awesome yes. feature that we can just select the status and it changes the color. Well, yeah, I was uh, holding, you know, not making the, the um, you know, self claim about this and saying, oh, look at this very nice design, you know, like I was going to toot my own horn and then I was like, no, that's inappropriate. So thank well, you. Well, that's why I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then, then the joke would have been, um, you know, Anyways, so if hmm? hi, so I'm just gonna. I have a question. Um, how are like so? There's these metrics that are great and they're released. How are we? How are they being used? And how are like we tracking their use and like kind of validating? Like, what is the validation and testing look like? So I think good question. A, yeah, that's a good question. Okay, or do or anybody have thoughts on this? But and I can sell. So I'll, I'll just I'll buy you more time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that um, like I sort of open an issue for is like I feel like the piece that is at least missing in conversations that I have is how people can take those metrics and apply them like. Yep. in a TLDR kind of way without having to go through the repo and even like understand all the little bits that make up the metric. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, I have plans to kind of write some of those kind of like almost like recipes for like evalu evaluation. Yep. Um, so I think that that's still f for me missing and I think would be kind of, I mean, helpful like once it's released, you know, people saying I'm using these and I think it'll help the chaos project too. Like, I'm using these, they're valuable, they're helping, like, or they're, you know, there's this thing that I can improve on, like, um, so I'm going to be doing that kind of on my own the next, I was hoping to have started by early February, like around leadership and governance, but I haven't, like, things, um, so I'm still going to do that, but um, I'd be interested in other people's takes on, like, what that validation looks like, so there's your, there's your time bought. <laughs> Could I point one thing out that I was just, um, it was just hitting me. It's almost like we, we want those who use the metrics to write a medium article, how the chaos metrics helped our project. And then they would, they would kind of write this, like we went, we got them, this is what we did. You know, it's kind of like the, um, um, the, the backstory of how taking the metrics um, led to the results. So, so you know, also it, it's kind of like a, behind the scenes. It shows really, okay, how did you use them? How did you roll them out? How did you sample? Um, so, so just just the uh, 
narrative, the account of how to take those and make them useful. Um, and, and, and I think it's fair, um, you know, to say that people who use them and find them useful would want to uh, co-author or, you know, um, maybe author on their own um, some, some, some of these articles. So what you're saying is a excellent idea and it, it goes back into something I've been working on. Sorry you see it, my mess here, but there is something about a blog post series metrics and use that um, we do have a, and this idea has been, we've developed this idea to have a series of blog posts about how people actually use the metrics. Um, so I can put this in the meeting minutes. And then the other thing we are talking about is having a podcast where we bring people on who share their experiences. Is there also any like systems like is Baturgia's system have like one of these metrics tied to a thing <laughs> or Augur, I think it's the other one. My, I, I'm afraid that for the DNI metrics, there is not a good um, implementation in any of the software we have. The that's why I think the DNI batching program is uh, so important because that would be an implementation of the metrics that we can yeah. give others. Yeah. And the I, others. Sorry, about on implementation, could I propose, um, I don't know what it would take, but could I propose doing it um, uh, as a web app, like a, you know, like a, like more like a serverless um, uh, approach? Uh, obviously, there will be a back end, some data going somewhere, but just just to try an experimental implementation with uh, um, client heavy uh, or client client um, sorry statically served um, uh, front ends that that doing that are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, um, not draining battery, <laughs> just doing doing good work, you know. I think the way that um, Emma, you had originally proposed it, like the web app kind of look, uh, I think that would be very helpful to someone that, uh, from my experience, it looks like it'd be very helpful to someone that doesn't know the metrics very well and it would be easier to use that way. So I think that's a great idea. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not talking React or Angular or any of those frameworks. I'm allergic. You know, they come with a lot of uh, opinion, which I can't swallow. So, <laughs> so I'm talking about spec compliant web components, uh, you know, HTML files that have HTML, you know, stuff like that. So I'm curious, yeah. Emma, are these kind of hitting some of the, your, the hopes or the things behind your question? Um, yeah, I think, I think so. Okay. I mean, I, I I haven't thought too too hard about like the the format. Mm -hmm. I just feel like um, like we created we had an innovation toolkit that we created at Mozilla, which was just like um, you know there's a, this activity and like framing it as activity is almost useful. It will take this much time. It will take these yes you know, things, and here are the three steps. Like that kind of thing, um, and yeah, the format. You, you have shared that before, which I think is super, I remember now that you're saying that. Yeah, it's older now, but I can yeah. share. Um, Actually, Georg has the link right there. Okay, yeah, yeah. So just like that sort of thing, because I think that feels doable. I think people feel overwhelmed, and mm -hmm. and it's all something I'm trying to solve for myself too. It's not just, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because if, some of it is big, right? Like. Um, some of it will, does take a lot of time and some of it, not all of it does though. Like the yeah. checklist we have for Moss is like, you know, some of our metrics are like, is there a code of conduct? Is it in the root of the, you know, the repository? Is there mm -hmm. like a list of, like there's, there's things that are actually quite simple to look at that, you know, um, that can be framed as such. 
Right, so like what Georg is showing here on the screen, I, the, the documents behind these are usually, at least from the ones I've seen, are pretty lightweight. You know what I mean? So they're like purpose outcomes. <laughs> it's gonna yeah. take you this long and then yeah. you're done, so. Okay, um, yeah, so that's what I'm thinking about okay. when I'm gonna maybe write a couple blog posts like this to okay. try and model it. It's a challenge to myself. Okay, so thanks I like for that. the and answering my question. Cool. Um, so just to clarify, is is there data data entry uh, components to this, or is it just um, like like how do you go about? Oh, this is this is a word. I think it's a, a WordPress. Those are all like content types or something. Yeah. So I don't. So, yeah, because I have not visualized yet the um, the rest of the process beyond um, the metrics are published and, and, and then some data is, is processed. I didn't, you know, the disconnect for me is, you know, okay, where does, what do people usually do to go from like, okay, I got the metric as a, as a markdown and I do magic. Uh, obviously, you know, I can reason about that magic, but I, I haven't seen the process of, okay, this is how I rolled it out and this is how I got the data. And then I put that data back into the system. Um, so, so what I was asking, if it is a web app, would it be a web app that deploys the metric to collect the data um, firsthand? Or, you know, would it be more of a, okay, here's what you need to go do, and when you come back, just give us the data. And this is where I have a complete... Um, Are you talking about the badging process? Uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about um, the, the um, you know, just... Um, when the metrics are released, how people are consuming those to generate data um, that basically um, gets processed um, by, I guess, one of the backends that, that we have? Um, or am I completely just... Yeah, so my take, my take on this is the, the way the, a lot of the metrics are currently structured in their... Um, in their... Well, in their, in their current format, we have implementation strategies at the bottom. So it's suggestions on how to um, gather information with respect to a particular metric. There's no software tooling behind. So the panels, okay, thanks for coming, Emma. Um, the panels that Emma was showing are, there's no software backend or software front end to those panels. They're just really cards that are, in my mind, bringing forward these data collection strategies that we already have. They're just doing it in a, a little bit mm, more visual way, suggesting how long this might take. Um, and, and a lot of the things like how you might go about doing that and how you might go about thinking about the data. So solid to your question. I don't think what Emma is proposing on those panels is it is a software driven solution? Okay, my take. Yeah, so so I, I know Matt has to leave soon. I do, uh, and and Matt now I guess, and and we have the badging. So so maybe I can pick up that discussion uh, later on in threads. Um, but but I, I got the point. I, I see where you're going with that. All okay. right, and I have to run too. I have to teach a class for <laughs> six minutes. So. Enjoy. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone. I have to leave for a class, too. See ya. Oh, Bye. yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, Sally? Yeah, I guess it's uh, up to me, then. <laughs> so let, let me try to act like I, I know what we were doing. But <laughs> so hold on. I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Um, so we're moving off the metric release then to the deny badging process. Yeah. I just have a quick question as a newbie here. Hi, I'm Angie. Yes, hi, welcome. <laughs> hi. Um, so really, maybe this is a, a really basic question and straightforward, mm -hmm. but how do I know that these metrics exist? Like how am I supposed to find these in order to then implement them? So you, you're raising an excellent point. Right now, we have uh, on our website, on the Chaos website, 
the metric page where we list the metrics that we have sufficiently defined. On top of that, we have published blog posts in the past to get the word out. We are also doing conference talks about this. So at the open source, uh, at the Linux Foundation Membership Summit, for example, we have a panel about this topic and then we do this at other conferences as well. So there are several ways we've tried to let people know that these metrics exist. Does that help or answer your question? Um, I can give an example how I learned about chaos. Um, I, I was basically talking to someone in GitHub and I was telling them about diversity and inclusion and accessibility. And they said, well, yeah, like the work that the chaos fo folks are doing is really great. Um, so, so for me, it was word of mouth, really. Um, but it obviously resonated with folks who, you know, um, you yeah. know, GitHub, basically. So, so Angie, I think we lost you there for a moment. Yeah, sorry, my internet's a little shaky. Um, I, I caught the last uh, bit about the fact that um, maybe a word of mouth and maybe, I don't know if GitHub is, was there, so with the mention of GitHub, was there mention of GitHub promoting? So that, that was just the uh, conversation on GitHub. Yeah, the no, other, no, no, actually, mm -hmm. sorry, sorry. No, no, it, it was a conversation with someone who has a particular position in GitHub about accessibility aspects. Uh, okay. uh, and they were well positioned to, you know, talk to me one-on-one -on -one sometime down the road. And that is when they mentioned chaos as being, um, you know, doing very important work um, that I should, you know, seek you guys out. So, so I, I didn't know otherwise, but that's only, you know, one, one, one way of, you know, how you could come to know about chaos. So, yeah. The other part, Angie, that I think you lost when you were disconnected sure. was that we have uh, on our website, the metrics page where we list the metrics. And then we go to conferences and have talks and sessions and panel discussions about these metrics. Okay. Where we have spread the word and we have also published blog posts in the past, but we can probably do better at getting the word out. Does that help? No, that is, that is helpful. Um, just because I have found, I mean, your, uh, your resources are very helpful and very like uh, good. <laughs> Lots of good links to external resources as well. And, but it took me like doing, like following a little bit of a breadcrumb trail to get there. Um, and, and I just want to, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I've, I've, started sharing the, the chaos uh, diversity and inclusion working group uh, GitHub with with other people as well. Um, and yeah, I just I, I, I want to make sure that, um, you know, your your work is seeing people who can really benefit from it. Yeah, no, you're, that's a really good point. And if you have more ideas on how we can do that. Yeah, I would I would definitely um, I, I'm sure too, you know, I, I think maybe part of how I found you was definitely through the diversity and inclusion listserv, um, through d diversity and inclusion in open source listserv. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm sure that there are some people that you, you gather through there, but, um, and it also sounds like this badging process is organically going to also get you some more eyes as well. Um, anyway, yeah, it was just something I wanted to make sure I wasn't miss missing completely. Yeah, no, thank you for the feedback. It was very helpful. So I think that was a great segue as well, because um, while you were saying, obviously, the badging in the back of my mind was, yes, you know, I wish the badging was uh, like, I, I could just imagine all those folks, all those projects that have worked with uh, chaos metrics putting, you know, something on their site that says, you know, we are um, proud to work with uh, the chaos metrics um, for our project. Um, you know, that's one step before the badging even, you know, comes in, in, in play. Um, it's just saying that we are not like 
business affiliates or anything. We are just proud to, you know, uh, say that we are using those metrics uh, and we are seeing, you know, making, um, making it a better experience for everyone involved in the project. And um, so, so it is not meant to be a one-way advertisement. It's actually a two-way street. Um, so, you know, that's a little different than the badge that they would get, um, you know, and hopefully they would get the gold badge, uh, you know, but they could still get, uh, you know, so, so right now these are the badges we kind of think will, will, will end up uh, being the options. Um, I'm sure um, other metrics may, may as well have badging um, and that goes to the visibility. Um, but this at least is a starting point. Um, so I guess now we shifted to talking about badges altogether. Um, so uh, I guess Matt, Matt is really doing the bulk of the work here. So uh, he made this repo. Um, I've been kind of slowly joining him. Um, and um, he basically wanted folks to be able to open issues. Um, and basically say if, if they want a badge for an event or a project, um, and then when they say, okay, uh, it's an event, uh, then they would fill out um, a markdown version of the questionnaire. Um, and, you know, it's hard to work with this format, obviously. Um, but I mean, um, one of the key, one of the important things is that we stick to a GitHub process we don't um, um, introduce a, you know, a third layer uh, or an external um, place, uh, like a web form or something like that. Um, so, so I guess um, this approach means every badge would have an issue and that issue would, uh, would have a review process. Um, you know, folks would fill out the uh, answers um, and then uh, they would, in turn, um, in closing that issue, they would get one of those um, levels. Um, so we, we were thinking about um, a different process because uh, opening an issue is good, um, but you know, there, there, there are other models used in open source, um, like um, for instance, uh, the travel fund in Node.js um, my experience with it, was, with it was to open a PR against a markdown file and put my information. And then this PR became part of the permanent record in the travel funds awarded. Um, and the PR's history itself was, uh, was the, you know, discussions and the back and forth that needed to be clarified, um, you know, to, to produce that one line of uh, transparent, um, code that is, you know, that is usual in open source, right? So that's the permanent record of that, um, you know, the transparent record of that uh, travel uh, allotment. Um, so, so I borrowed this idea and, you know, we talked about it, me and Matt, and we decided, okay, how about we do this? And unfortunately, you could have more than one issue template but when we tried to do more than one pull request template, um, that didn't really um, swallow uh, with GitHub. They have a bug, I think, or something. So we decided instead to say, okay, let's make a repo for each type of badge. Um, and then um, I put together a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of examples um, offline. Um, and we basically found that the organization github.com slash badging was not taken. So we took it um, and we started to, to, you know, move into the PR approach. May I ask a question? Sure. So I, I understand the idea to have a pull request workflow where people fill out a form. Maybe they are add uh, a markdown thing somewhere so we have a permanent record and while they're getting the batch we work through the pull request model now 
the you, you said there are two different batches event and projects um yeah so so um so dni of an event versus a dni of a project um so you get a badge if your event um if your event is um, receiving a, a, a badge, um, you know you fill out that particular uh, form. Um, so let me let me backtrack here for a sec. Ah, oh, that doesn't work. Really? Where did it go? Oh, it's here. All right. Yeah. So so I can open the two templates. Uh, just. Um, you know, for me, this is detail I don't pay attention to. Sorry. Um, you know, like it's it's a ready template, so I just used it as such. Uh, but yeah, those are the two different um, templates. Um, so I guess when when you when you do get a project badge, you would put that on the repo. It, 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 it's a it says that this project has you know the DNI criteria that gives it this kind of badge. Um, and then when there's an event, you might want a badge to put somewhere related to that event. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure um, you know, of, of that. that. That would be more of a math question. Uh, but you know, I took it that those were uh, the implied uh, differences. Um, so but, which, one, which one will you finish? first, events or projects, because then I would like to dive into that batch a little bit more. Um, which batch? Yeah, if you have events and project, I assume yeah. it makes sense maybe to focus on one first, sure. flush that yeah. out before we start spending uh, oh, uh, like, spending too much time on both at the same time. Oh, no, no, like I'm, I'm just showing them generally because I'm, I'm not sure. Um, like to be honest, I haven't been part of those templates at all. Um, like I'm, I'm, those were kind of in the repo at that point in time. I was just going to show the workflow. That bit I, I I've been party to. Um, so, but but do you do you think what we want to do is revise those or review those? Was that was that what you were getting at? I see Amy unmuted herself. Yeah, I was just curious. And mind you, I've been very sporadic on attending meetings because I had conflict on Monday. But so we've got this basic template that I'm assuming matches up to the metrics. In yes. which case, you know, we've got all the basics in there. I mean, yeah, we should probably review them and just make sure everything is good. But if it's matching up to the metrics, I think if someone does pass or if you get like nine out of 10, you're on this, a silver instead of a gold or whatever. I think the basic work is there. I mean, from the OpenStack side of things, yeah, we would try to get the project to get a badge as well as, you know, Summit and PTG. So I can see why there are two different templates here because even though everything's the foundation, you know, the events are different than the project itself, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, so yeah, so, so, uh, you know, I really would have loved for Matt to be here and, and give better context. I'm, I'm not doing this justice and, and I do apologize. Uh, but, you know, I, I stick to what I know what I can do and um, I, I don't have that uh, much insight here to, to make this helpful. Um, so, okay. It's, one thing that I'm thinking about right now is, um, for the Kubernetes process, uh, th there is some, some process. And Don, you might know more about what has happened in Kubernetes, but as far as I understand, they have a conformance program where you have to fill out like a form similar to this and then submit the form as a markdown to a repository, which is the documentation that you are conforming to whatever they're conforming, the API access, whatever. And is it, Don, do you know something about this? Yeah, I think it's, I think that's less of a badging. I mean, conformance is a little bit, a little bit different because I think that there are also some, some technical tests that they need to pass in order to call it conformant. 
Yeah, they do have to pass because um, like OpenStack, a couple of the projects are did pass conformance. So I, I know a little bit about the process. So basically there's, you know, the basic Kubernetes and how it should work. And then you have your offshoot of how you're using it. And it goes through conformance to make sure everything works and is proper. Yeah, but it's, it's different. I would say conformance is different than badging. I can see why you, uh, I can see why it's similar, but um, conformance, for example, is, you know, what are the tests that I need to pass in order to call the thing that I'm shipping a Kubernetes distribution or an OpenStack distribution? So you're actually using, um, you know, it's more of a, it's more of a technical test um, to make sure that if, if I write an application on top of Pivotal's Kubernetes, it works the same way as if I write an application on top of, say, you know, on a Kubernetes that Amazon does, a EKS or something. So I understand that there's a more technical nature to it than what we have, but that we do have the metrics that provide several ways of measuring any one metric and the badging process is dynamic enough to allow someone to have to, to make an argument for how they are measuring it. That's how I'm understanding it right now. The part where I think we can learn from this Kubernetes process is that in what, what Sala is showing here is just adding one line to passing or not passing, which is good. But I would also like to document that template that he said. And rather than having that in a pull request discussion, have an actual markdown page somewhere where it becomes part of the repository, because so that that's a, that's absolutely a part of this. Um, um, you know, it's possible with the PR approach because uh, once once they fill out this and we comment and they correct it, we can copy and paste that markdown and push a commit to their branch that puts their filled out version. Uh, in a folder of all applications, you know, the records, and make a link and, and put the badge in the, in, in the uh, table, link it to that particular record. Um, and when, when, we re when our review is satisfactory and they are satisfied by our, our review, we can merge the PR. Um, so it's, it's a collaborative PR that will uh, that they they actually initiate by saying I want to put that line here and that's in history, um, and then we modify that line and indicate that we've put the badge and point it with a link to the um, markdown file um, that is canonically permanent in that repo, um, um, you know, using a naming convention um, that we follow and not ask them to, you know, figure out. So would that be a good, um, a good way to visualize this or? Yeah, I think something along those lines. So we have a pull request that does two, th two changes to the repository. One is it adds a markdown page based on the template with all the answers that documents exactly how an event or project is following the DNI metrics. And the second part of the pull request is adding the entry in a list of passing badges. Yes, and linking them, right? So, um, and, and I think we can use GitHub Actions to actually take the body of the PR and automatically um, preserve that um, and make the link. Um, so, so I, I see from this a, a really useful process, I hope. Um, mm -hmm. But there will be a lot of, uh, we need to write documentation to help folks who hit the unexpected. Um, I will uncover some of those, usually not the same unexpected that other people do. Um, um, but yeah, so, so we, we will have to play around with this workflow enough. Um, of because, course. You know, if getting a badge is you know, proving too difficult, <laughs> we might not even know that it was, right? So people just gave up because of all the, like, I pressed it and it's putting the wrong thing, you know? So, yeah. Um, okay, I've got a quick question that's more implementation-wise. 
Um, are we going to be handing out these badges or are we going to somehow control and provide a link so that someone doesn't say they're a gold and they were actually a non-passing? Good question. Great question. So, so we did talk about this. We, we start off by saying we have those PNG images made from shields.io, but, but we also were, were keeping in mind what it takes to actually call an image from shields.io is that it knows the origin or the, the uh, which, you know, the cross origin request basically says uh, what refer, um, you know, asked for this image. Um, so when we say a particular or um, a project or event is badged, then we know particular uh, referrers that will be whitelisted to receive that particular badge. Um, now, the technical um, flip side of this is, okay, how do we work with or around shields.io so that those particular DNI badges do not get generated using the same magic string, um, you know, if the URL is not whitelisted. I'm, I'm sure shields.io has a process that for a particular tag, um, a particular, um, um, you know, webhook gets triggered um, or a particular, you know, um, third party is consulted to, um, to populate the shield with the particular data needed. So, so we will have to explore how exactly we can technically get this implemented. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're going to hand out, um, you know, full mark versus, you know, passing, um, most people will say, yeah, I got the full mark. So. <laughs> so, okay. So there's the technical question of displaying the badge. And maybe we can build in some technical check that they are actually listed on our passing list. And then we have the legal side where we have the trademark or the Linux Foundation owns the trademark to the Chaos brand. And that is our legal leverage. If someone does display the badge without um, conforming to our badging process. Does, does that help, Amy? You're muted. Yeah, can you scroll up just a little bit? There was something that caught my eye. Aha, IMS Global. Hey, this is a work-related phone call. Okay. Um, yeah, so we could even possibly run through a database hosted over at Linux Foundation, I'm thinking. Um, I mean, they've got infrastructure. We don't have infrastructure. Let's be real. Um, Technology-wise, it wouldn't be real hard to host these badges over there and run checks on them. We would just need buy-in from Linux Foundation. Yeah, I, I think the trend is, um, like Cloudflare, for instance, has this worker idea where um, on a network request going to your, um, your, your um, uh, domain, you can basically have a, a middleware um, or you know, a service worker per se, you know, in, in a way that when it gets a particular request, it knows where it's coming from, you know, refer, and it knows what the request is. Um, and then it can do a network request uh, that is different from what the static server is doing um, and then it can, can uh, augment or redirect or mutate the returned result. So at this point, if we say there's a GitHub repo that has a, a markdown file, and in that markdown file, if the query is not matchable, maybe a JSON file, if that query is not found, then the batch should be um, not, not authorized or, you know, um, illegal or something, you know, go to jail, something like that. Um. <laughs> I, I, I have another idea. One, one thing that we could do is reuse the platform that the core infrastructure initiative created for their best practices badge. Are you familiar with that? I completely 
don't have any clue, maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if Chaos so, already has a system for badging, shouldn't we be leveraging it versus, I mean, mind you, this work is different than that, but if there's an infrastructure already in place to hand them out, it makes sense to go ahead and piggyback so that anyone else who then has their own badging system in their working group, we're not duplicating any efforts. So here, let me, let me share my screen. Solid, can I have the screen real quick? I'll just take that as a guess. Yes, I was trying to get to the button and now I can't get to the microphone, so yeah. Yeah, no worries. So here, the, this is the core infrastructure initiatives, best practices badging program. And I know about this because I helped them with the silver and gold level and I translated the whole project into German or I enlisted a friend to help me with that. Okay, and so it's not really chaos as best practices badging. But the, we could maybe join in on it. So they built this platform for the badge. And the way it works is you add a new project. Okay. And then what you have is here a list of requirements. And within each requirement, you have a question, and then you have you can provide an answer. And they have different levels or different kinds of answers, like text answers. But then simply saying this requirement is met, unmet, or we haven't decided yet. And then they always have to provide evidence for how they are meeting the requirement. And through this process, you get these check marks. And if you have enough check marks in all the right places, then you automatically get the passing silver or gold level, which looks like this. And you can embed it. You get a uh, URL that you can embed in your repo or on your website. And this is dynamically generated badge that checks against this website. So I love, I love the idea that they're, uh, the, the, this front end basically, like I, I don't like the idea of filling out the markdown template because you know when you put a markdown template, people are very inclined to change the structure of the template um, when they feel that the template doesn't really speak their mind. Well, I do that, sorry. Um, but every time I opened an issue that told me exactly how I should describe my problems, my problems were not meeting the template. I was frustrated because, you know, how would you know exactly, you know, what you could be missing? Um, so, so when people work with templates, they can also accidentally delete a question and not realize that they did. And then someone has to sit through the whole thing to say, oh, you made a mistake. You've got something deleted or. Yeah. You, so and you eliminate that problem with this web app. Yes, and, and that can automatically trigger opening the PR and starting the review process because I don't think we want to hand out the badge just yet. We want to collect that information, populate the PR with all the relevant pieces because that's the transparency record uh, aside from the uh, record of, um, you know, that will be checked against the white list of getting this badge from this. Yeah. Uh, Right? Just to clarify, this app here would replace the pull request model. These are two completely different systems we're talking about. Yeah, so uh, the review process here, is it all just dynamic or is, is part of the review process the intervention that takes place? Um, there is, for the CII best practice batch, there is no review. So that is something where we might have to ask them if we can put in a review process where we as our reviewers can approve a batch and review the or answers. Here's an idea of if we really like the PR format and workflow, could then the approvers not go into the system, click through and get the link to be shared? I mean, it's an extra step, yeah. but at least for the time being, I don't think we're gonna have a thousand people applying for these. Yeah, I, I, I kind of visualize because, because I've, done, I've opened issues uh, for some software, they give you a playground and they tell you reproduce the process, the 
configuration that led you to, you know, not get prettier, to be, make things prettier, for instance. Um, and uh, so when I do that and I click okay, open the issue, um, now I don't have to fight, you know, the urge to change the template. The answer is there. And nine out of 10 times I submitted the issue as is. Um, so, so that this idea that there is a PR, it's because this is the By Don. natural way to review the process. Um, so, so I, I, I really feel a good um, synergy can come out from this, you know, where we have this front end that is already tested, now being repurposed by adding the um, review model of the PR which is very familiar. And, and by doing that, we're minimizing all the uh, moving parts because if you're getting a badge and you're now diverted to a, a pull request uh, and you're asked a question, you can answer that question. Um, and, and you're part of a familiar review uh, uh, process. Um, and after that, there is a permanent record, which I, I beg to... Um, you know, I believe that the markdown approach is transparent documentation of the process. Um, that there is a data record of it elsewhere is not necessarily the invisible component of transparency we're talking about here. You know, it could just be IP address or URL badge number or, you know, badge code. Um, and, you know, so th those are my, my, my kind of, um, insights here. Okay, so we're almost out of time. And thank you for working on this and giving us a rundown of the progress Matt and you have already made. This is really great. Well, thank you. Yeah, at one point, I think it would be nice. Um, Amy, maybe you said it makes sense for OpenStack. Maybe we could sit down at some point and go through this badging approach together to see basically as a prototype or early feedback if we could fill this out for OpenStack. You're we meeting. might need to get um, some of the foundation folks involved to answer some of the questions. But yeah, I think we could go through it. I don't have an issue with that. That's, uh, it's good to have someone to, uh, to do this with, because then we can, as a guinea pig, yeah, to make sure that the questions make sense, that the process works and all that. Yeah, so I mean, we can even do it ourselves. And if there's anything that I don't know, definitely, we could contact the foundation and get answers from, so. Yeah, so Solomon, maybe. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I was gonna jump to a question, but go ahead first. Oh, I was going to say, if you could take this back to Matt, and maybe we can use one of these meetings, if you take the first half hour, to start just walking through the process as if we were a project filling it out. That's what I okay. heard Amy suggest. OK. Um, so, so a walk through um, um, with the current approach, not with the, with, not with the front end uh, assisted approach that we so, yeah. so as it is right now um, in, in the repos, basically. Yeah. So okay. whenever, whenever Matt and you are ready, we can okay. uh, do that. There, there was a quick question just, just at the end of things. Um, um, so so um, this badge here basically has the KS logo and stuff like that. And Matt, Matt was saying that it would be nice if we can make enamel pens or something. Uh, just, just the idea that you would have like real life badges, um, and um, you know, it's a separate discussion, long discussion. But, but, but a key point that uh, hit me, you know, someone from uh, graphics and printing and all of that, was if, if we're ever printing that stuff, we need a branding.md doc that basically says, here are the prescribed ways you can use the logo. Here are the Pantone colors, or you know, yep. uh, hex code because you know, I don't think we have Pantone colors yet. <laughs> so I can send you the branding document we have on the logo. Uh, yeah, the logo and the colors and the font yes. that you're allowed to. I can send that to you. 
Okay. Um, is, is it available in a central repo, branding.md? Can we start that new practice? Would be cool. Um, I think they have on the website um, a place for these things, but I don't think I actually put the, the specification of colors and so on on there. So maybe we should add that. Yeah, I, I can work with whoever would want to work on this. Um, yeah. you know, I'll, we're out of time, so I'll send this to you after the meeting. All right, thank you. All thank right. you, everyone. Thank you. Have take a good day. Yeah, take bye bye. Care.